Hey, problem solvers. Welcome to literacy. You know how in some fields there are ways to signal that there are rush seas ahead, something difficult coming, you know, kind of like how on a beach they hang a special flag to say that there's a storm approaching or high winds expected or um, like on a ski mountain where there are signs on top of any trail uh, saying either green circle, which means it's really easy or double black diamond, which means like for professionals only. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about this because I keep thinking that I wish there was a way with a non that a nonfiction text could tell us how difficult they are before we dive in. Because I'm sure many of you have experienced this, right? Where you'll pick up a nonfiction book and maybe there'll be a cute picture on the cover or uh, maybe even you'll see big font and you'll be like, oh, I've got this. This is gonna be so easy. And then you dive in and it was a lot harder than it looked, right? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about some ways that nonfiction books can be hard so that we can feel more prepared to tackle those challenges when we meet them. I'm gonna read a paragraph to you really quick. It's my very hard to read a bit of nonfiction text. And I want to see what we notice about why it's difficult, not only to, to read, but to understand. So let's take a look. According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the United States in 2009, 36% of children aged seven to 17 and 15% of adults swim at least six times per year in addition, swimming is considered the fourth most popular form of recreation in the United States. One hour of swimming can burn off up to 620 calories, more than you would burn off through other kinds of exercise, such as walking or biking. The U.S. Census Bureau states that swimming is one of the most popular activities among children and teens ages 7 to 17, but an estimated 65 million people in the United States in the United States still do not know how to swim. Whew, that's a lot. What do you notice about this paragraph? Well, one of the first things I notice is that, is that there's a lot of numbers, am I right? Every single sentence has a number. Even this second sentence here has four, hidden in there, every sentence has a number. And it can be a little distracting because I think the first time I read this, I was really focused on the numbers, so much so that I didn't really absorb what I should be learning about swimming. Does that make sense? Let's talk about some ways that you can stay focused and tackle these hard parts of nonfiction reading. Let me show you something. Bam. Tackle the hard parts of nonfiction reading. So, the first thing we want to do is notice certain things. For example, a misleading headline. Oftentimes headlines are, are put in right after, uh, I'm sorry, right before publication by somebody who is not the author. Um, and that makes it so that sometimes they can be misleading, sometimes they can be confusing. Um, this is why it's really important to do what we've been talking about lately when it comes to previewing the text, thinking about how the text is structured because when you're reading in the learn to get smarter way, I'm sorry, read to get smarter way, um, you really wanna focus on what information you're trying to find. What topic are you trying to learn about? And if the headline is misleading, it might lead you 
somewhere where you're going to get distracted and not learn what you want to learn. Anyway, let's keep going. Fact overload. Same kind of idea. After we preview the text and we know that we want to learn about T-Rex fossils and nothing but T-Rex fossils, then I need to be aware that I shouldn't be focusing on, on insects caught in amber, you know, or any other subtopic that might be in a book about fossils. I need to focus on T-Rex fossils so that I don't get overloaded by extra fat. Make sure to um, notice if the beginning of a book is confusing. Because sometimes I can throw you off. Remember to focus on what you're trying to learn. Long detours and extra information. Again, focus on what you're here to learn. If you opened this book to learn about hurricanes, and the book goes off on this long tangent about, about anything else that has nothing to do with hurricanes, focus yourself and remind yourself, I'm here about hurricanes. I might, you may be able to skim through that section so that you can get to the information that you're trying to find and focus on that. Graphs and diagrams. Again, make sure that these graphs and diagrams are talking about exactly what you were trying to learn about. After you notice all of these things, it's time to take action. So we will read and we reread. I cannot tell you how important this is. I reread passages in nonfiction texts all the time. Think about that paragraph we just read. The first time I read it, like I said, I was just focused on the numbers and I was like, overwhelmed and I didn't really absorb any any of the information but then I went back and reread it breaking it down sentence by sentence and after two even three readings I was able to finally make sense of it it is not a waste of time and it is not a negative thing at all for nonfiction readers to go back and read um, their text you also want to ask important questions like, what is this part teaching? Is this part teaching me about T Rex fossils? Yes? Hone in and read to learn. No? Read it like you're waiting for the dentist and, um, and keep an eye out for when the information you're looking for does count or does come up. And then you want to talk and write about what you're reading so that you can work through your thoughts to further understand. You want to ask yourself questions like, how is this information true? Why is this information true? Things like that. Really think critically about what you're reading so that it sticks in your head. Now we're going to practice these skills when we come back together on Zoom by looking at a specific book and working together as a community to tackle the hard parts. But I wanna remind you of something important before we go. When you're met with a challenge or something that's hard, something that's difficult, you really have two choices. You can choose to avoid it and not grow from the experience, or you can choose to embrace it. And really think about the steps that you, that you should take to meet this challenge or to overcome this challenge. And that is what we're doing. We are facing challenges. We are growing as readers. And we will be able to enjoy so many more wonderful pieces of writing because of this hard work. So with that, <laughs> I will say... Goodbye for now, and I will see you very soon on Zoom. Bye.